Alright guys, so we are back with episode 5, and in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to actually authenticate the user. Basically, we did successfully authenticate, but it doesn't actually save our user to the database, and it doesn't actually save the, uh, the user with a session, okay? And we need to do that in order to persist our application, otherwise, every single time, if our application restarts, we're going to have to have them re-log in again. But even then, if we don't actually save the user to the database, there's no way we can actually tell which user is actually making the request because every single time they make a request, we won't know what it is. There's no cookie. There's no session ID. We need to get that to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement our own authentication system with Django. Well, we're not going to implement our own. We're going to customize the built-in one, which is going to be very, very easy. So Django actually has its own authentication system. And there are a couple of important methods that we're going to be using to actually get this to work. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into this settings.py. Now you're going to need to look for this list it's called authentication backends now you can see that there actually isn't one over here okay that's because by default django actually uses uh, this one let me actually pull up the documentation so if you look over here django uses model backend so what we want to do is we basically want to create our own so i'm going to go ahead over here and i'm going to go ahead and create a list authentication underscore backends and this is going to be a list of all the backends that we want to use so we're going to overwrite our own so i'm going to go ahead and create a new file called off.py and i'm creating the file inside discord login folder so first let's go ahead and import django.contrib auth backend so we're importing this from this module we're going to import a class called base backend the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import the model that's going to be associated with the actual user so the reason why we created the model in the last video is because this is going to be used to actually uh save it to the database the user so we're going to say from models, import discord user. And now we're going to go ahead and create a class and I'm going to call this discord authentication backend. And we want to extend the base backend class just like that. So now we need two methods in order for our authentication system to work. We're going to implement the first one. So we're going to find a method called authenticate. Now for this authenticate method, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the first parameter self because we're inside a class. The second parameter we're going to pass in is the request object and the third is going to be the user object. And we're just going to go ahead and say this is going to return a discord user, the type adaptation. Okay, now this function is basically going to be invoked and it's going to have the request object and it's also going to have the user object as well. Now we're not really gonna do much with the request object, but we do need to take the user details and we need to uh, check the database to see if it's present. And if it's not, we need to save it. So we're gonna go ahead and first find the user. So we're going to say discord user objects and to search we can use the dot filter and then we can look for the user based off of their id which is what would be ideal because the id is the most unique uh, field for the document and it's also a primary key too so there can't be any duplicates now this dot filter is actually going to return a query set so which is very different than an actual uh it's slightly different than a dictionary okay but what we're going to do is we can actually call the length function on the query set and we can check to see if it's zero. So we're going to just print out a statement. We'll just say user was not found, saving. And right over here, we're going to need to save the user. So I'll do that in just a bit. I just want to show you guys how this method is going to be invoked. So let's leave this alone and let's actually go over here. And now let's go to authentication backends. Okay, and we need to include this authentication backends because like I said before, by default Django uses its default one. We need to override our own. So we're going to reference our app name. So remember in the very first video or second video, we created a new app called Discord Login. So let me zoom in a little bit. We're going to have the name of our app. Okay, not the name of the project, the name of the app. It's very different So Discord Login. And then we want to reference this auth module okay so dot auth and then the actual class name itself just like that okay very 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 simple now the next thing that we want to do is we need to somehow call this authenticate method now it's actually very simple to do that 
So inside the views.py, where we have all of our routes defined, what I'm going to do is inside this Discord login redirect, because this is where we are going to end up going to once we have successfully authenticated ourselves. And once we have done that, we're going to exchange the code for the access token, and then the, we're going to take the access token and use it to get the user details. But what we're going to do is after we get the user, we want to actually authenticate the user. We want to invoke that authenticate method that we just created. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to import from Django.contrib.auth. We're going to import the authenticate method. And we're also going to import the login method as well. So these are two methods that are used to authenticate as well as login. The difference is that authenticate will actually check the database to see if the user is there. And if it does, it'll return the user object. With login, login will actually save the user with the session so that way it can persist. Now the problem here is that authenticate, we are using our own custom one. So we have already taken care of checking the database. We used to save it. But I'm going to show you guys how to call the method. So I'm going to go ahead and just call authenticate. And this is going to take in a couple of parameters. First, it's going to take in the request and it's going to take in the user. So user, user, just like that. Okay, so let's actually see what happens after we call that method. So let's go over to OAuth to login. So let's go ahead and authorize. So you're going to see right over here that we actually get an error and it's saying that cannot import name a back base backend. So I think the reason why is because actually, I don't know why, but uh, it's a good thing that we actually got this error now because I can show you guys how to fix it. But you can see right over here that it says it's Django version 2.2.1. Now I'm not entirely sure why, because I could have sworn that our Django version was the latest one, but you want to make sure you upgrade your Django version to the latest version because base backend is actually uh, a new feature i think in only version three and above so we got to just fix that very quickly okay so i was actually able to fix it basically what i did was i uninstalled django globally because i think i had django an older version installed globally and it was using that instead of the one in the virtual environment so i just read pip uninstall django and then it said would you like to uninstall django version 2.2.1 and i said yes and then i reinstalled it in the virtual environment and it seemed to have work you can see now it says django version 3.0.8 so just make sure you're using that latest version okay so now if i click on authorize you can see we're back on this redirect route, but look at the console. It says user was not found saving. That's being printed out from the auth.py file. Okay, so that's, so that's quite interesting. So now we know how to actually invoke this authenticate method. Okay, so this means that we can actually continue using our own authentication system. Now watch this. If I actually go back to the settings.py, and I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this, and I'm going to save. And I want to reauthenticate again. Okay, you're going to see that we're actually going to get an error, and it says no authentication backends have been defined. Okay, so this is where we can basically choose which authentication that we want to use. And if you don't have one, if you don't have this list present in the file, then it's going to use the default one by default. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I just want to show you guys how to set up a custom authentication. In the next video, what we're going to actually do is we're actually going to save the user to the database. Okay. And that's going to require us to use a custom manager. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.